Boa noite. Bem-vindo. Welcome to the first world meeting of Jesus Friends, Chico Xavier and his legacy. And this is the 10th national meeting. Today, our theme will be body language, emotional and body language, and good news with Vanessa Anceloni, who is a spiritist, a fifth generation spiritist, Brazilian American. She's a neuroscientist and psychologist. She has worked announcing the Spiritist Doctrine for more than 20 years. She's the founder of the first Spiritist Radio in the USA, Kardec Radio, 24 hours and in English. She's the editor-in-chief of Spiritist Magazine for 13 years. And she's the president founder of the Spiritist Society Baltimore, Spiritist Society Virginia, and Spiritist Society of Washington, D.C., and she's a translator of Spiritist books. Welcome, Vanessa, and the interpreters Lilian Braga and Denise Chico. Olá, amigos. Hello, friends. It is a joy to be here united and reflecting about the message of our governor, Jesus. When we refer to our planetary governor, it's a challenge on Earth. Only 2 billion of the 7 billion of inhabitants which are now here or embrace the proposal, Jesus' proposals. It's still a big challenge on Earth. Our planetary governor, Jesus Christ, our Lord, as Chico Xavier used to say, it's someone for us to know. I'm going to ask you for us to start with a prayer, asking for help so that this study is beneficial and can bring therapeutic balsams to our lives and a lot of awareness. Senhor Jesus, Lord Jesus, Who are we para te compreender, to understand you? Mas somos as suas ovelhas, But we are your sheep, outrora perdidas, once lost and now, cientes do seu amparo, aware of your help, cientes da sua ascendência sobre nós, aware of your ascendance over us. Seguimos We're going to follow you. And for that, we are here. We ask for your protection, for your help, your love, so that all of us can feel the benefits that come from your generous heart and your loving heart. Friends to all of us, friends to all of us. We are grateful and we start now this study, reflective study to strengthen in this reincarnation. Thank you, Master. So be it, amen. Dear friends, we are going to start through some slides. It's a summary of a study, a research that we have been doing for 10 years. 10 years ago, we started translating the book Good News, which has been psychographed by Chico Xavier. Thank God. So, we are going to see in the first slide this proposal through the reading of Good News and other books 
that have been psychographed by the Shiko, we are going to find a master which is differentiated. This is the emotional body language of the Christ and the good news. In the first slide that I'm going to show you now, the next slide, we are going to have a question. A question that Kardec asked the spirits to understand how we can apply the divine laws which are in our consciousness and we have forgotten what is the model, the most perfect model that has been offered to humanity so that it is a guide and a model to us. This is the question number 625 from the Book of Spirits. And the answer is for sure Jesus Christ. There's no doubt. There's no maybe. But how can I follow a model that I can't see? How can I follow a guide that I never see? It's as if uh, we didn't know how to swim. And we had never seen anyone swim. Ride a bike without having had anyone to guide us through this. So where is he? Some people say something like that. Well, Jesus is back there. I haven't lived in his time. When you think about Jesus, how do you see him? How do you visualize him? Do you see him standing, sitting? Or his facial expression? Is he a master that speaks to your ear? Some people say, well, I can't even think when I am angry because I feel that I will not manage to do it. I feel embarrassed. I think he judges me. Do you really think this was Jesus? Do you see him at the cross? Very far from here? Unreachable, like an American lady once told me. No, well, it's very, very hard to get there. Or uh, another person said to me, I, I can't imitate him. I don't want to compete with him. And so the superior spirits tell us in 1857 that we still need a model, a guide to follow. So who is this master? Who is this master? Who is this model? Who is this guide? Their words. Well, you know, forgive seven times seven, seven times seventy. Is it possible as a neuroscientist and psychologist when we translated uh, with the team at the Virginia Spiritist Center and the Radio Kardec, we realized that that in Humberto de Campos' book, there was a complete description of a master that we will show you in the next slide, a coherent master, a master that is complete. A master that, uh, as Joseph explains, what is a coherent master? Joseph says, someone that has thoughts and feelings which are aligned with actions and words. Someone that, if we follow, we give us, will give us peace, inner peace. And will take us 
who lead us to consistency. Jisun wasn't a master that said love and didn't express his love. He wasn't a master that talked about peace without expressing pacification. He wasn't a master that mentioned compassion without being compassionate. He was a holistic master. He was complete. He was coherent. Then, in the next slide, we are going to be reminded of a phrase that was said by André Luiz. He says, virtue is not a mouth that it speaks by a power, but it is a power that radiates. It was a virtuous master, a divine master. He couldn't come here only with words. Maybe because we are so attached to the word, we cannot follow him. Many people in the Spiritist doctrine say that I know, but I can't do it. So what is missing there? You have to look at this teacher. You have to look at this master. That is what's missing. You have to look at this model, look at this guide. You can't have a yoga class, if I don't know yoga, without following the master. I have to follow. I have to look and follow. But Vanessa, I can't see this Jesus. Where am I going to find him? That's why Jesus, in the gospel according to Spiritism, we have it reported there. Uh, a chapter by Allah Kardec, when it says the exact words that Jesus said to us. One day, I'll send you the pacifier that will explain everything that I cannot explain. And that will be with you till the end of times. So what is the meaning of that for us? The spiritualist literature is the consoler, is the promised pacifier that gives us this master that I couldn't see before. It is not just love thyself. It's not just that. We will see in the Good News book by Humberto de Campos that this was a coherent master. He's, he talked about love and expressed love. So now we will give a few of these examples to see how in the literature by Chico Xavier we can find this complete master this virtual power that radiated throughout his body emotional language. Um, before that, uh, I want to remind you that there is a new field of studies in the neurosciences, which is called neurobiology of emotional body language. And there we study how we influence others for each other without words. We will see in the next slide that the, the social psychology, please, the next slide, the social psychology tells us in the next slide, please, okay, that nós, através de nossa Through our body message, we send messages that influences the other. So everything in social media nowadays is an example of that. We open a TikTok. There's no word there, but what you see also influences, uh, brings an emotional, an, an emotion to you. So social media is a big example nowadays that the body and emotional language is highly uh, impactating. In the next slide, we are going to see why. Darwin, 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 1857, 
while Lampada was publishing the Book of Spirits, Darwin published the origin of the species and told us about our phylogenetic history, describing our body expressions associated to our emotions and in animals or in humans, as you can see in these images there. These images were Darwin's drawings to show us that he was both a genius and an artist. He showed us that the roots of our facial expressions and body expressions, they were in the species, in our phylogenetic history. It is an evolutionary uh, process because it is adaptive. What is the meaning of that? Our emotion is a sign that shows us how to protect ourselves and survive as a species. So, to learn to deal with emotions and express them is a survival issue. Such is the case that in the next slide, we are going to see that in the, this is the next slide, we will see the biological root of why we influence each other. We have a system, psychophysiological of mirror neurons that since the 90s, neuroscientists, Italian neuroscientists, and most recently in the USA, these scientists have been showing us the dynamics of this influencing amongst each other from our neuroscientific structure. You and me. We were created by God to imitate people. So that's why it is so important to select our models. That's why parents have to take care of what their children watch, the games that they play, because that will impact their emotional life, spiritual life, and physiological life. The scientists have shown that the experimenter showed uh, stuck out its tongue and the monkey did the same. The monkey doesn't know what the scientist was doing, but he could copy the gesture. So the neurosciences nowadays show us that we have a structure, neurobiological structure, that will accommodate that, that imitation for survival. So if we observe the next slide, the next slide, we're going to see that sciences, psychological sciences, so we're going to observe that the sciences explain that most of what we capture from the other doesn't come through words. The majority of it comes from what we call emotional body language. Only 7% of what we capture through communication comes from words. That's a reason why we, we hear something about Jesus, but we can't practice because we don't see it. So, how does Jesus love? It's not just through speech. Because through speech would only reach 7%. That's why parents say, I tell this to my son, I tell my son, I tell my daughter. But you, you can't just speak, you have to be coherent. You, you have to 
I have to be coherent. That's why in the next slide, we are going to go back to Jesus in the book Good News. In this book, and then in the book Jesus in the Home, in some of these parts that have been described by Emmanuel 2,000 years ago, we are going to see this coherent master, this complete coherent master beyond words. Who was he? Who was he? These are the non-verbal lessons from Jesus. We'll see that Jesus wasn't someone that talked a lot and imposed things on people. Just the opposite. He was a silent, calm master. We'll see Jesus' facial expressions, his silences, his tone of voice, his posture, his smile and embrace. It's something so surprising, and I'm not going to show you with statistics, but a brief summary of some of these points so that I can illustrate how Chico Xavier literature is the comforter. And we will have everything that we didn't know before. And now it's just in front of us, the complete master. And everyone says it's, it's in the past, we do not have any videos. But we do have it. If you open the book, The Good New, you see it as a film. Because Umberto Campos' description provides us so many details is as if I saw a Hollywood film in front of me. Let's see the first case. Let's see Jesus' postures in the next slide. We'll see that Jesus taught us much more than only words. We will see here on that part of chapter 2. I mean, chapter 3, we can see the first preachers of, preaches of the book. When Hannah saw Galilee, he was sitting down as a pilgrim. Jesus didn't enter the temple, but he was around it. Jesus was noticed by a group of uh, thinkers. Jesus wasn't inside the temple. And why is that? Because he said he's going to plant the kingdom of God on earth. We do not need to be inside any temple in order to plant the seeds. As Leon Denis said, this is why Jesus is coherent. He was a complete outside the temple as a pilgrim who saw, could see, he was a pilgrim. And who, who is a pilgrim? Is a person that migrates passing the message. So he passed throughout many places. He didn't belong to anywhere, but everywhere at the same time. He was the migrant himself, the migrant that went everywhere. And on top of everything, the Pharisee saw his look and, he, and how unique he was and his deep look. His posture in many cases, with the descriptions of Umberto de Campos, Neo Lucio, Emmanuel in 2000 years ago, we will see that. At times, his posture was a comforter one. He was elegant, a noble and a simple posture, unforgettable posture, charismatic one as well. 
in Maryland University, I remember I was teaching about the emotional body language in the medical field for medical students. We were going to have an exercise without any words. And we proposed, now you'll be the, the doctor talking to the patient without any words. And you need to tell the patient he or she needs to trust you. Many people told us, this is impossible, professor. And I said, let's try it. At the end, they were surprised and observed and said, how interesting. I had no idea that my emotional body language is much more striking than my voice. How about you on your relationships? When you want to be simple, noble, elegant, comforter like Jesus was, how can you do it without any words? Is it possible? By reading the literature, we will see in the next slide, this is look. We'll see in many ways that the Jesus' look was a specific look. In this first ch chapter, on chapter 3 of the Good News book, when Pharisees met him, he, has a lucid, he had a lucid and deep look. Lucid and deep. How about our look? How has it been? How many problems have we created? Who remembers their mother, that we were so frightened by our mother, father, our teachers look? What is the impact on our relationships? In every instance, Jesus' look was, sometimes it was firm, at other times it was lucid, loving, attentive, soft, bright one. These are some of the characteristics of Jesus' look. It was Christ, God on earth. Through it, we'll be able to learn these non-spoken lessons. In every instance, if we look at, at front directly, we will feel welcomed, loved, approved, and never judged, never. And there's no report in, li in the spiritist literature and no instances of it in literature through Chico Xavier's psychography and Humberto de Campos, Brother X. We never find Jesus with a look that is not approval one. If we have difficulties to face it, to see him and feel him, it's because we do not know him. This is why we are here in order to see that the, the master only can be followed if we understand him, if we see him, if we observe him. From now on, we have the opportunity to view this lucid Jesus' look. And there are words that he told Hannah. What do you do here, Galileo? And with a modest posture, modest and noble posture. You see this modest and noble at the same time. It looks like they are two things that exclude one, 
one another, but there's a difference. Someone in front of us that have a modest but noble posture. And he says, I'm, I'm going through Jerusalem. I'm looking for the foundation of the kingdom of God. And very peacefully, he clarifies as he is clarifying us up to date, 20, 21 years after that. He's here to clarify our inner Hanan that still exists and his call, his serenity, modesty, nobility. He's still defying the divine proposal on our inner selves. This is why I invite you to go along with me with other three steps. And this is a small summary that gives us the, the will to go back to the works, to see Christ again, visualizing it, visualizing him, I mean. Building a Jesus hologram, our master just in front of us, so that we can follow him at every step, at every guidance, without any words. Now in the next slide, we will learn something about the master. He wasn't only about words. He, he taught us through silences, a silence that we do not talk about. Throughout lit literature, throughout Chico Xavier's psychographed works, we could observe that he used silence in two central instances. One, it was a silence with a reflection that used, was used to meditate. And the other one, it was silence to avoid confrontation where himself paused and thought before saying something else. It's impressive, a master so wise, a complete master showing us the power of silence. In literature, in psychoanalysis, we can see Jacques Lacan. Jacques Lacan studied something specifically about the analysis of speech, and he detected the power of silence. The silence that tells us more than a thousand words. And through silence, Jesus also guides us. So many times we are invited to avoid confrontation. In Laws of Love book, Emmanuel tells us that having confrontations, we have problems, lesions in our perispirit. We should avoid these confrontations as our... I mean, Jesus shows us without any words when he himself was quiet. But many people have difficulty in being quiet. People have to say something because they need to. And these are not the people that follow the Christ because at many times, Christ will not say anything. He will avoid confrontation. People need to be very brave to do so. And Chico Xavier was an example of a Christ follower. He had power in his hands for many friction, for lots of friction with many people, but he avoided that. At every time, 
Nós vamos ver a linguagem corporal. We will see the emotional body language from Chico Xavier using silence in a reflection moment. Many times to use in his pauses and many times to reflect before speaking. In our relationships, we are invited to follow the silences of Jesus' lessons. We do not need to be silent to give consent. We need to be silent to avoid friction, to avoid uh, something problematic tomorrow. And tomorrow we can say that today we are not understood or that will be misinterpreted. And Jesus says silence in many At many times, we will find the power of his message of love. And to talk about love, I invite you to this moment that is so close to Jesus. In the next slide, we'll be able to see a master that hardly anyone talks about. This is something impressive. In Humberto de Campos' literature, many of his books. There was one specific book compiled in Jesus' script, as if it were a sequel of the Good New Book. Humberto de Campos described a smiling master. A smiling master at many times. But his smile wasn't a laughter. It was a smile. A smile with a specific characteristics. It's something fascinating. It's fascinating to see a serene smile. Can you smile with serenity? Can you have a benign smile? Benign means to do good. I, a benign smile, a loving smile, a calm smile, a generous or elegant smile without being hypo hypocrite, without irony, a sincere, a friendly smile. In many instances, We will seek this smile of Jesus. We can see in literature, when we have a search in the Good New Book, we find 29 instances of this sweet smile of Jesus. You see, a sweet smile. And when? When one of the apostles listened the last words of the divine master, it conserved, in, it was silent before that sweet smile. This is the master that if we know, We change only by looking at him. Can you think of his sweet smile? It's like having mass, a massage on our heart. Our heart that is tired of the pandemic, of the pain of this moment of planetary transition. So many difficulties we have now. And we listen this report of a smile of Jesus that is benign. Chapter 4, when Umberto de Campos describes the Zebedee's family, when Jesus is with him, which is the father of one of the evangelists, Zebedee, Zebedee respectful said, Resignação. Master, your kingdom is of peace and resignation. How was Jesus in his di this dialogue? There are people that think that Jesus was distant in, this di in his dialogue. Let me tell you about some, something. 
I saw Dalai Lama in Washington in 2006 in an international congress that we have more than 35 million people. They brought Dalai Lama because of his work with in, in Tibetan. We could go, enter the same room he was, and we were so near him. We only didn't shake hands. And there were many monks along, uh, around him. Be, and there were many people there because of political reasons. But I remember him being jovial, being light. It seemed to be a Chico Xavier to win. Someone cheer, light. And we imagined this, the, this Christ, people, the, the lightness of Christ. So Jesus was talking to Zebedeo with some with a smile, a benign smile, the peace of consciousness, supreme resignation, the will of, of the Father. And he continues talking about it with a benign smile of his. And when we are studying this spirit, spirit works, we forgot about it. We are too severe, and we are talking about love. It's not coherent. I need to find coherence. And how do I do it? We need to look at the master in front of me. It's not only listening to the words. We need to see it. We need to read the good new book again. And do not stop in the words, but we need to pay attention to the description of the master that Umberto de Campos wrote. This complete master, then more than 93% of the times, teaches us without any words, so that with our mirror neurons, we can follow this model. This this not common model, this calm smile, the sincere smile, this is something rare. A serene smile is something rare. This is why now we invite the most intimate model of it, a master that is so close to us that I'll show you in the next slide. He was a master that's not only elegant, modest, and he was a master that embraced us. Did you know he was a master that touched people? Jesus' embrace is described in literature of Humberto de Campos and Chico Xavier. He, they described it very well. His embrace was a careful one, a tender one, without sexual tones. His embrace was a meek one, a loving one. The embrace of a friend, a friendly embrace, a loving embrace. We will see in his first preaches that Jesus, when he was talking to Levi, he was being invited by Jesus. Humberto de Campos says that Jesus responded to Levi, okay, let's go. But he said it embracing Levi, and no one tells us that. He doesn't say, so let's go, and he left, and Levi came along. No, he embraced Levi, and this is a love gesture. He doesn't say, let's go there, be the kingdom of God, like a general. No, he wasn't cold and distant. This master brings us coherence, and I'm showing you another part where Jesus 
Look at this. In one of the chapters, he was talking to one of the friends, one of the brothers. People nowadays think we need to decide who is going to continue the work. This happened at the time also. They needed to decide who was going to continue. So one of one of them, which were older, people thought he couldn't continue Jesus' work. And Je Jesus said, tonight, after talking to Jesus, he had uh, Simon Zelotti had a glorious dream. He fell asleep, happy. He dreamt that he met Jesus in the hill. And Jesus embraced him with care. And he appreciated the, what he said. So I wish today we can also dream with his master, this complete master. And Chico Xavier's literature, friend of Jesus, friend of all of us, he brought us. Humberto de Campos' spirit, he gifted us, gave us a gift of this loving master that embraces us and accepts us. This is why I'm going to show you the last slide. And I would like you to see the image. I would like you to feel Jesus embracing us. Not only remember the words. Let's feel. We will perceive this is an invite. This is something brief without the statistics. But, but we can, as Simon Zelotti, this model and guide is not a model of words. It's a model of action. Not action with the other people, but with you and myself. This is something very close to us. As he said, he told with John and his brother, John the Evangelist, when they would kiss Jesus' hand, he was carrying his curls. And with this loving gesture, he was embracing them. And he, embracing us, he invites us to follow in this path of light that we are destined to do. Thank you so much. Obrigada, Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. And thank you for thank you our interpreters, Lilian Braga and Denise Tipolo. And I am very glad to be able to thank you all that have shared this time with us. In spite of all difficulties, because we have planned and unfortunately some obstacles come on the way. They spring from nowhere trying to stop us, but these are exercises that are given to us by divine providence so that we can exercise tolerance, patience, and faith in God with a lot of love. And so I would like to invite you to, on our screen, uh, check the program for the next days. And tomorrow, hopefully, with no technical issues, because our planet is going through a lot of difficulties in our social media. So we have to reflect on how dependent we are on them as well. So tomorrow, the 5th of October, we will have Rosaria Jordão with the good news by Humberto de Campos at 6.30 Brazilian time. And on the 6th, Geraldinho Lemos, he will talk about the gospel essays by Emmanuel, 6.30 p.m. On Thursday, Ferran Peron and the originality of Chico Xavier's works on the 8th. 
Friday. Sonia Barsanti, the Gospel in the Life and Works of Chico Xavier. And on Saturday, Noemia Maria José, Primitive Christianity at 2 p.m. Brazilian time. We will also have Sergio Santos and Marlene with a musical gospel about uh, Chico Xavier. And on Sunday, uh, Baceli will close uh, our event with the Comforter at 3 p.m. If we have any other problem, please be uh, watch out for alternatives that we are going to offer during the program. And all this will be recorded, so you can watch it again at your time, at your pace, and mostly for people who are not in Brazil. Um, so I would like to thank the people in the technical team, Barbara, Carlinhos, everyone who is here in this radio, and people who are in other radios. Okay, he's waving, they are waving to you people who are outside Brazil in the different radios. Thank you so much for your patience, for your prayers, for being with us here. Now, uh, Rodrigo will take the floor and tell you something about our bookshop. Thank you. Have a great evening. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Vanessa, for your patience. Uh, to the interpreters, Claudia and Barbara as well. Carlinhos, who is here to, to do the last prayer. The world has gone through a transformation today to show us how people depend on technology. So not everything that is uh, excessive is good for you. So we have to deal with these things. We are live uh, through different radios. I would like to thank these people who are listening online. Uh, Espaço Espírita from Barra Velha, Doutrina from Rio, Web Radio, Seeds of Love, Radio Portal da Luz, Espírita de Dourado. Radio Portal da Luz, El Dourado. Um pouco devagar por causa da, dos intérpretes. Então, I have to speak more slowly. Então, todos vocês, so, I have to thank you all é, novamente, and invite you again no, to uh, no nosso site, okay? access our site. Vou aqui vocês. Agora eu vou I'm going to show you now. É, para, para vocês. I think we're going to be able to show you now. Just a minute, please. Aqui. Uh, a livraria. This is our bookshop. Okay. Esse é o nosso, o site. Okay. This is our site. O primeiro encontro. The meeting site. The first world meeting. Vocês podem entrar. So you can acompanhar. go online and follow here the bookshop. Então, so, there are 656 books uh, by Kardec, Chico Xavier, by Geraldinho, by John Harley. There are 206 messages, 173 books on codification, 69 biographies, and 35 poetry art books. So, you can enter the site, link on the site, and any purchase that is done through the site, 15% of this amount, of the, the amount, uh, it will be destined to charitable entities in Uberaba and Pedro Leopoldo if you buy the book through this link. Okay, so thank you very much. So our, our fellow Christian Carlinhos is here to, for the last prayer. Just a second. 
Dear fellow Christians, I'd like to thank you for your company. In spite of all the surprises we've had today, we are grateful for being here for this blessed opportunity that once again gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ, we are able to share this knowledge by Dr. Vanessa Anceloni and that we may be able in this moment of light to remember that today is the day, the world day of animals and the day of Francis of Assis. Uh, we would like to close our, our event today. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there's hatred, that I may take love. Where there is offense, that I may take forgiveness. Where there is discord, that I may gather people. Where there is doubt, that I may take faith. Where there are mistakes, may I take the truth. Where there's despair. May I bring hope. Where there is sadness, may I bring happiness. And where there is darkness, may I bring light. Master, make me, make me look for comforting people more than being comforted by them, understanding than being understood, love than being loved. Because it's by giving that we get, it's forgiving that we are forgiven, and it is dying that we live for eternal life. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all, and let us be in peace, light, and love of Jesus today and forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord.